Okay, those are the two th figures that I'm missing so that I can go ahead and um, calculate this. Oops, this, right? Because that's going to be 4 minus 0.5. So this is 3.4985. And this is 4 minus 1.003. So this is 2.997 meters cubed. Right, and these are the two values that I'm interested in so that I can find out what's the pressure difference. All right here. Okay, so this will be equal to pressure one, which I've always known, 100 kilopascals, times the ratio between the volumes. My answer here will be in kilopascals because obviously meters cubed are gonna go, gonna go away. And when I do that, I get that the pressure is 116.7 kilopascals. Okay, so there you go. That's pressure two. I'll say two for the nitrogen. Now, remember that I said it had to be greater, right? We were compressing this, so therefore it should be greater. And indeed, 0 .6, uh, 116 is greater than 100. All right, what's up next? We need the work. Work. Okay work done in this process so water mm -hmm, the water is going to not going to change in volume water is incompressible in liquid form anyways so the work is pretty much the work of pdv as i go from v1 to v2 now pressure changes from one state to the next as does volume but temperature does not, right? So what I can do here is that I can note that P1, V1 equals P2, V2 equals P3, V3, so on and so forth, equals a constant. And we've done this uh, integration in the past, recently in the channel, you can check it out. And then because of this, I can go ahead and say that this work is the same thing as P1 uh, or V1 natural log v2 over v1 we've done this previously and note that we have everything we can possibly need right because we're going from one state to the next so therefore this means that if i take 100 if I multiply by v1 that we just calculated to be 3.485 if we take the natural log of the 2.997 that we just calculated to if I divide that by the 3.485, I'm going to get my work. And it turns out to be 53.92. Okay, this is work. The system is being compressed. And you can, you know, depending on where you are, you might want to use this as a negative here, and then you're going to get a positive result. I honestly prefer it that way, but it's up to you and where you are. Unit-wise, what we have here is kilopascals times meters cubed times nothing, right? Because it's a ratio between, it's a natural log, so nothing going on here, and we have a ratio of nothing here. So this is kilojoules, right? So this the answer here is in kilojoules. And that does it for the second part of the problem, right? <clears throat> what is the work done during this process? Okay. So next part up is what is the change in internal energy and what is the heat transferred? So change in internal energy. You note that in the beginning of the problem, they give us C sub V, right? C sub V, if you recall, is def defined as the rate at which internal energy varies with temperature in a constant volume process. And what we can do if we are given a single CV is that we can integrate this so that we end up with C sub V um, average value times delta T equals delta U. Now, what is the delta T in this case? What is the delta T as we go from state one to state two? 
Well, t1 and t2 are the same, so therefore delta t is nil, right? It's zero. And if delta t is zero, then delta u is also zero. Right? So therefore there's no change in internal energy whatsoever in this process. And last but not least, what is the heat? Well, if we think about it, and we think about an energy scale, if my state one is here, and this is internal energy of the nitrogen, just once again, the water is there just to mess with you. Okay, if we think about the internal energy scale, we're not changing it, we're not going anywhere, right? So whatever happens here, whether we have work, um, in, uh, energy in the form of work being added to my system or being released from my system, the heat needs to account for that, right? So if we're putting on, let me rephrase that so that makes sense. If I'm giving energy to my system in the form of work, then I need to be releasing that energy in the form of heat. If my system is using up energy in the form of work, that energy must be coming in the form of heat. Only two options, those are the only two options. So what is going on here? We are going from, where are we here? We're going from a system that has a greater volume to one that has smaller volume. So we have the forces being uh, acting upon my nitrogen and therefore we are, quote unquote, giving energy to my nitrogen, right? We're compressing the nitrogen, so therefore we're giving energy to it. So what we have is this situation here, right? So I'm gonna go, to ahead, go ahead and eliminate this. Okay, and if this is the case, because none of this energy can be absorbed or will be absorbed in the form of internal energy, therefore that same energy must be released in the form of heat. Okay, so how does this show up? Well, it shows up in the following way. We get the first law of thermodynamics in this way here, because we're using, because we used um, internal energy as a positive here. Uh, sorry, work as a positive there. Um, we get internal, the first law of thermodynamics, like so, and we say, oh, this is zero, right here, this is zero, and then Q is what I'm after, and then this is minus, uh, what was it, 50, what do we get, 53.52 kilojoules, right? So therefore, therefore, Q, heat, has to be 53.92 kilojoules, right? It has to be, it has to be the same amount, energy-wise, in terms of kilojoules, calories, or whatever your unit of preference, has to be the same amount, energy-wise, um, sorry, energy amount-wise, and it has to be leaving my system because I am compressing my nitrogen. All right, so that does it for our problem. We figured out all the single parts. We've known, we know that um, the pressure has increased, and it has increased to 116 kilopascals. We know that uh, the work required to compress this nitrogen was 53.92 kilojoules. We know that there was no change in internal energy because this was an isothermal process to a ideal gas. And we know that all those 53 um, kilojoules that were released by the nitrogen they were, uh, sorry, given to the nitrogen, were released by the nitrogen in the form of heat, right? And most likely absorbed by the water, but that's not part of the question. Okay, so I hope this was useful. As per usual, if you have any questions, just leave them down below in the comment section. And if this video was useful, consider giving it a like, and we'll talk soon.